Hello everybody! Hi! Welcome back to my channel. Two things, one there's construction outside so praying it's not gonna be too loud. Two, I was feeling vampy this morning. So, that's why we might be looking more glam than usual. I was just feeling it. So, here I am. Um, today we are doing another q and A. I'm super excited. I was between like asking you guys if you wanted like a specific q and A, more on like NYC and school or fashion and style. But then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just have you guys ask whatever you wanna ask. But let me just explain really quick. This video is gonna be a little two-parter. First part's gonna be me answering a little Q&A, and then the second part is gonna be me with Trisha and my mom in the car ride driving to Long Island answering true or false about me. And it's kind of like a spin-off of that, like who knows me best, my roommate or my mom. I just thought it would be fun for like all of us to like react and talk about true and false and just like, I don't know, it would be fun in our car ride. Ah. I, this is my first time, like I bought this lip product yesterday because I'm inspired by Iris. I'm obsessed with Iris. These are the pictures that I was like, okay, I need to get a berry lip, bro. It's probably don't care, but if you do, this is the Perfect Tone Matte Lip Cream. Is Perfect Tone a makeup brand? I don't even know. I just saw this in Dwayne Reed and I was like, that's the color I think I want. I but the color is in pretty sexy, period. Lip liner that I have is the CoverGirl Lip Liner in Plum partner. Yeah, so what I'm using. Let's get on to the question. I have randomly, a lot of questions on how my boyfriend and I met. So I'm gonna just get this question out of the way because it's kind of a spiel, but I'm gonna shorten it. So basically, we met on a service trip, and I know service trips are problematic because it's like that white savior energy just like going in. It makes more sense to just give the money because they're paying and, and fundraising for their plane ticket just to the organization and they could do whatever. Like I understand I was incredibly, you know, ignorant, didn't really know about that when I was going. Um, I went multiple times and I know now I wouldn't probably do it again. Um, but this is just how we met. I went with like a church group, even though I'm not very religious. It was like my family friends kind of church. Um, and so we had gone a couple years, it's an amazing experience. And so basically we always do like pre-trip stuff and a kid dropped out kind of last minute. Kieran, my boyfriend, his two friends were going that I knew very well were like, there's a spot open, would you wanna go? And so I guess he had come to one of the pre-trip events, but I hadn't seen him or met him or known he was going on the trip or whatever. So essentially when I first saw him ever, it was like 2 a.m. boarding the bus to go to the airport to literally leave on our service trip to Guatemala. And you know, he's 6'5", and I'm like, he walks in and I'm kind of like, who's this 6'5 fellow here? I don't know who this is. We had a layover in Chicago. That's when we really started talking. I had packed Twizzlers because I fuck with Twizzlers. Any Twizzler lovers out there? Because I get shit all the time for liking Twizzlers. And I guess Kieran fucked with Twizzlers. So he was like, let me get some. We were all chatting in a group. We're bonding, whatever. Basically, I'm gonna sum this up really quick. Throughout the trip, we were just chatting, flirting, but didn't even know. I didn't even realize mentally what was even happening. Um, and there was a moment on the trip where, you know, we both talked and he was kind of like, I would love to take you out after the trip. Obviously this is not a trip or not a thing that like, bitches would be sneaking off and like kissing and like doing crazy shit. Like, this is a service trip, bitch. So like very much not about to do that. But I was definitely, you know, feeling him. I was like, you're very cute. Um, and so, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'd love to go on a date with you. I do want to let you know I am a senior in high school. I'm going to be dipping to college soon. Do you want to get into this? Like, do you want to? Because, you know. And we clearly got into it because we've been together for four years. We kind of got home and then dated ever since. So, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah, and that's crazy. Do you plan on staying in NYC after graduation? Yes. I very much do. I plan on staying in NYC for a while. What would you call your style? I've been asked to kind of like describe my style before and it's always so hard for me, but I think like I would describe it as like funky, eclectic, that's a fun word, colorful, fun, me, 
girl, I don't know. I never know how to describe it. Those are my descriptors, sure, we'll go with that. How did you find your style? I love it so much, thank you very much. It is overwhelming to get love about like your personal style because like at least for me i don't i don't know i guess my personal style i relate that so much to like kind of like who i am and what i love and clearly it's what i want to do with fashion so it's like when people like see that they fuck with what i'm doing even if it's not them i think that's so cool and i've always like admired people with different styles than me. I think it's so cool. It's important to surround yourself with people with differing views and opinions and influences. That's not the question you asked at all. How did I find my style? Girl, trial and error. Many, many years of just not getting it. Many years of not really feeling like me. Um, my last q and I kind of like showed old videos of my style so you can peep that and see some of the evolution. But I feel like when I really found like my peak fashion sense was more the way I shop definitely helped um, shopping vintage and thrifting and not necessarily like buying at the same stores that everybody else was buying kind of helped me like force myself to kind of be more of an individual um, and I don't necessarily think you need to do that but I think what's most important is like when you put on an outfit and when you get dressed for the day you just want to feel like you um, and so I don't ever like want anybody to put on an outfit and not feel like them and feel like they're trying to be somebody else or trying to conform to what the rest of the kids are wearing in their high school or whatever. So I guess like be attuned to like how clothes make you feel. Um, look for inspiration. If like somebody dresses and you're like, I fucking want to do that. I want to be able to dress like that. Like that, that should like tell you like, okay, try it. Or like, you know go to a thrift store and see if you can recreate like an outfit but make it your own or like whatever like try to incorporate different like styles or decades that you might be interested in into your style and see how that feels but i feel like rather shopping trend by trend shop more for like pieces and pieces that like you really love and kind of like create a collection rather than just like a closet or a wardrobe like actually if you if you want to develop a style like i want you to like care about your clothing um or i think it's cool to care about your clothing so have fun play music go into your closet try everything on see how it makes you feel play with different ways you can style it make mood boards find inspiration um and see where you can go from there i feel like there's no rules when it comes to finding your own style and there's it's so hard and you never know if like the style that you're in is actually who you are because you don't always know who you are and you always change so it's like i don't know i watched um billy eilish's interview with vogue the other day like the talk to a legend kind of thing and she was saying how like ideally like when she was asked about her goals like she just wants to do what she wants to do now and in the future she wants to do what she wants to do then like in that moment and i'm so with that like I identified with that so much because I don't necessarily have specific goals for myself but all what I 100% know like with all my heart what I want to do is what I want to do in that moment um and so that you can kind of like apply that to what you want to wear and what you're feeling and what you're into is like it's okay to like not be one style because that's unrealistic and if you are one style if you're just edgy that's fucking cool like go off but i'm just saying like you don't need to feel like you have to fit into one box or one label when it comes to clothes and it that goes beyond styles it goes past gender it goes past sizing it, it you know like you can explore and push boundaries and you know it's easier said than done um because some people's towns and some people's families are more controlling when it comes to dressing and what you wear but you will find the time and the moment for you to completely you know go all out and try new things and i think through that you'll find what suits you and what makes you most happy and what feels like you and what makes you most confident so yeah i think i think that's my answer <laughs> that was a long one how long have me and my boyfriend been together and is long distance hard so we've been together for four years um long distance is very hard definitely like throughout the years we've gotten better at it us adjusting to different lifestyles on our own while also still trying to talk to each other and be there for each other 
um and it's it's interesting but you like you learn actually so much about each other and about life and I don't know and I think it's important like I think long distance is so doable um I feel like people shit on it all the time I don't know as long as you're not there's my hand staring at me doing this hey you king as long as like you're letting each other grow and experience your own shit at school because you know college is one of those places where you know you learn a lot about yourself whatever I think you can do that while also still dating somebody like I don't think you need to be single in order to do that to be honest i've learned so much i've been through so much in the past four years just looking back on it um and i'm so incredibly thankful i've had kieran like all the way through all of that if you want long distance advice um a couple pieces of advice would maybe be like i've had like more of a set time or idea of when you'll talk and kind of like have that time for each other um so no matter what you're going through or how stressed you are, you know, like you have time where you can like put that behind you and just listen and be there to listen and then talk and speak your mind and then you guys can work it out. And it's actually very nice to like think about your day and think about what's going on with you and kind of talk that over with somebody. It's kind of like a little therapy session at the end of some days, you know what I'm saying? So transparency is key. Honesty is key speaking your mind asking for things like that you want instead of just like Being resentful and thinking that they should give it to you anyway be fair to each other, but also be transparent and um, you know know your needs and speak them to each other and Yeah, mutual respect and Trust somebody asked would you have your own clothing brand in the future and absolutely yes um, I would love to start my own brand. I have a lot of ideas um, and a lot of like important people or things that have happened in my life that I've always wanted to like create something and tribute or with with them in mind or with experiences or pictures or art or something um, in kind of collaboration with my childhood and my childhood influences and stuff. I think it would be really cool to some do something like Maria Bernad does with like Liffler Studio um, and do kind of like an upscale consignment shop, having her own kind of brand, but also the studio that sells other people's brands and clothing and consignment and luxury items and stuff like that. I think that is so cool. I would need to make sure I would do it right. We'll see. <laughs> Miss Lena asked, something you wish you knew going into freshman year of college? I love this question. I think it's really cool. Thank you for having me reflect. Well, one, when people say college goes really fast, you know, they're not lying. I don't know, maybe just kind of my same advice that I would give my younger self and that like to kind of trust the process, worry less and be present. Here's one, comparing yourself to other people gets you nowhere, bitch. So stop doing it. And I'm not free of it, I still do it but I'm way better at not doing it and I was really bad freshman year so it gets you fucking nowhere do not compare yourself to other people it's so pointless you can be like somebody but you're not them you're your own person so it's like you have your own shit like just do you please because working on yourself and investing in yourself is one of the best and most amazing things you can do. Choosing to be yourself is one of the bravest things you can do and be yourself unapologetically. So do that as hard as it is. Do that. Just don't worry about any other anybody else in terms of, you know, what they're doing in, in comparison. Care about other people, please. Do things for other people. That's important. But I just wish I reminded myself of that more. Somebody asked me if I speak French. The way just them asking that question just is a huge compliment to me. I would love to speak French. I've taken French in high school and I took it in college and I was abroad in Paris and I spoke it. I lived with a family in Paris and we spoke half English and half French because my host mom, who I spent the most time with, um, 
wasn't like 100% there with her English and I surely was not 100% there with my French. So we would teach each other, try to teach each other like a few new words every day. I wish I spoke French. I, it's on my bucket list to like speak it fluently. It really is on my bucket list. Um, I just really struggle with the, the way languages are taught in school. The best I've ever gotten at French in my entire life was being in Paris and speaking it and hearing it and you know being around it so and people always say that like the best way to learn the language is to speak it and engage with people in the language etc and that's a key thing like if I if I do work for a fashion company or in the fashion industry in Paris, I would need to know how to speak French. I don't want to be that American bitch that does not know how to speak French. Anybody has any recommendations of good ways to learn a language? Seen, you know, the Rosetta Stone and Duol, Duolingo, is that what it's called? So I should probably get into that. Maybe I'll do that this summer. Really prioritize learning French. Thank you for reminding me that I need to get on that. Fave brands? so many so many and i always say there's so many fucking creative people out there i'll put my favorite brands at the moment right here on the screen because if i start to talk about them i'm gonna go on tangents and this video is gonna be forever so i'm gonna put them on the screen i'm also gonna put them in the bio as well everybody's asking about fave nyc thrifts and stuff like that and i'm really trying to do like a nyc thrift guide video um but that's obviously gonna take a while because i'm gonna have to go to each one like you know plan out what i want to say and all of that jazz but um fave nyc thrifts i think second street is really cool uh just to see what like designers they have basically like consigned designer so that's really cool and you go in like different sections there's vivian westwood who i darked to every time but i've never found anything that's you know my style but it's where i got my poochie my poochie boots i love beacon's closet both of them there's one in brooklyn there's one right by the new school and that one's great i just think beacons is cool and i i sell my stuff there sometimes so that's always a fun one but there's always the l train ones those are kind of hit or miss for me but sometimes like their prices are really good i think 10 feet singles are really fun one but it's funny i love it but i never get anything there because i love so many things and it's, it's pretty expensive so i'm just like okay i can't decide on one thing so i'm gonna get nothing I need to get better at that because I look back at some pictures because I'll just take pictures for inspo when I'm there. I'll look back at pictures and I'm like, bitch, why didn't you get that? Even just for inspo, the picture, but then go shopping when I'm home and find it for cheaper. So that's how I save money. A lot of people are asking, how do you afford the clothes that you buy or how do you make money and stuff? Um, right now, I'm very much unemployed. I mean, I'm still trying to make money. <laughs> With the YouTube, it's a slow process, at least for me. I sell my clothes, um, whether that be at like Beacon's Closet, but then make money and buy more clothes with the money that I just made there, if that makes sense. You know, it's like store credit kind of thing. Or sell it on Depop. There are also brands that send me stuff, which I'm beyond grateful for. I will never like really wrap my head around that people actually like see me and they're like, I wanna send her my shit. Like that is just so cool. Um, but yeah, so I do get sent um, clothing for free um, and kind of repay people in posting and promotion, etc. But I usually only agree to designers or brands or companies that, you know, I would wear anyways and support anyways. Or that are a good, um, you know, career jumping point. Also with like doing influencing work, I just wish there was another word for it influencer because i do not see myself as an influencer and i'm not judging like that lifestyle it's, it's just like doesn't seem like that's kind of my world but i obviously i love to work for brands and i love you know the work that i put into like shoot photos and stuff i obviously would love to get paid for so learning to like you know know my worth now and actually like develop my own rates and ask for things like that um so kind of how i'm making money right now is kind of trusting in my side hustles somebody asked where are you from right outside of Boston, Massachusetts, suburbs, Massachusetts. And I love being from Massachusetts. Rose asked me, hi Rose. How has growing up near Boston impacted your style? God, that's, hmm, I actually wonder. What's so cool about like living right outside of Boston and like Massachusetts in general kind of, I just feel like, I don't know. People didn't really give a fuck as much as you would think like growing up in like a suburb um and i didn't feel like that much pressure like from my town um in terms of like me saying i wanted to do fashion you know i didn't feel like weird about that 
even though like it was never there was no fashion class offered at any of our schools there wasn't really any fashion programs i didn't know really any students doing it just because you know i feel like i always felt like i could just do my own thing there i guess it's helped with my confidence too loving where from where you're from that's definitely huge so yeah, I think maybe that. Lucky I grew up around people with that Boston mindset and then moved to New York and I feel like grasping that kind of New York mindset was easier for me because I've been around people that are just kind of do your thing, talk your shit, love what you love. I don't know, I don't know if that's cheesy either. I'm going home very soon and I'm very excited. I miss it. Yeah. People ask about what I study and what college I'm in. I'm, I answered this in the other Q&A, but I'll just do it quick. I go to Fordham University Lincoln Center and I study, or studied, so weird. I already like finished school. I had my last class already. So I studied, damn, past tense, communications and culture. My concentration was in culture and then I minored in fashion studies. My stepdad the other day asked me, looking back on it all now, would you do it differently? So there's, there's a little Q&A question for me. Um, and I told him, I'll never know what I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll never know what my life would have been like if I did go to fashion school. I'll never know that. I only know what I know now and I only know where I'm at in this moment. And I wouldn't change where I'm at in this moment. Maybe I would give myself a, maybe I'd give myself my dream job, full-time job right now. Maybe that's the one thing I would add, but like, I'm incredibly proud of the person I am right now and I don't think I would have had the experiences I did if I changed something about my decision or didn't go to Fordham or whatever and I think those experiences are, you know, they, they definitely changed me. So no, I don't think I would. I don't think I would do it differently. I mean, I have an insanely complicated relationship with my school. I've hated it probably more than I've loved it, but I wouldn't change it my one advice if you were going into college right now please for the love of god if your school offers a study abroad program and you like to travel do it do it for me no do it for yourself do it for yourself but please do study abroad what contributed to finding my unique style i've got a, i get a lot of questions about my style and I'll, i i'll just say this and then i'll answer one more and then we'll go to the true and false but my thing with the, finding my style i think what definitely helped me was working i worked in a consignment shop for like a couple years um and that kind of like anticipation of like never knowing what's gonna come in never knowing what brand i'm gonna have to look up and learn about and and what could potentially be some crazy luxurious luxurious item or like in a cool archive from like the 70s or you know like a bag of manolo blonics or you know like it's just you never know what's coming in and you never know who you're gonna meet and you never know what clothing items have been through what their stories tell so i've really admired throughout the years learning about you know and and buying clothes that have stories and like then i can put my own spin on them i think really cool like statement pieces and items that are clearly bold and and out there and outrageous i think are so badass because clearly somebody's worn those somebody bought that and so I think that's so cool to then wear that myself and kind of embody that, like continue that tradition, even though I have no idea who had that piece of clothing. I'm just wearing shit boldly and loudly and unapologetically. And I think that's so cool. And so that's why I love buying shit that, you know, have clear has clearly been worn like that. And now I can do it and make it my own and make it me. Seeing the process, the clothing process of overproduction and overconsumption and um, the cycle of clothing and the cycle of trends, cycle of fashion is so a thing. You know, I'll wear stuff and my mom will be like, oh my God, I wore that in high school. And I'm like, why didn't you keep it for me? And I'm like, what the fuck? But it's like, it, it, you know, it really is a cycle and it really is crazy. So there really is no point to keep consuming and buying like at a rapid rate because stuff is going to change. So I think invest in your style just as you would invest in yourself because if you believe that if you value clothes and you value them as an extension of yourself and how you feel and all of that then care about it don't just chuck clothing away don't just buy shit that you're gonna wear once and you know get rid of it but yeah I guess it's it's helped me develop my style in that way and how I shop and kind of that nostalgia for different decades is a huge thing for me I answer my biggest fashion inspirations in my last Q&A, so go check that out.
but Iris Law has become a big one and I didn't mention her in the last video. So Iris Law is like, I just love her. Three words to define your personality and then the other three words to define your style. And I already defined my style. So I guess I'll define my personality. I'm very outgoing. I don't, I don't know like a better word for this, but in terms of like, and I talked to my friend Maria about this, how like if I'm meeting a new person or if there's any sense of like awkwardness or silence or whatever, like I'm constantly overcompensating for other people to make sure they feel comfortable in environments and stuff. So I will, I want to always like engage with people and make eye contact and chat with them and put in the work in conversations because I just really want everybody to always just be comfortable and I want... You know, so I'm very chatty and outgoing and I'm like a lot. I've got a lot of energy. But yeah, I'm chatty. I'm quite chatty. I guess this is kind of part of my personality, sure. I like go to bed relatively early and I'm I'm an early riser. Um and I like to good a good night's sleep. I'm not your classic college kid and I've never been. I've always liked turning in early. Always. I'll you know, I'll go out stay out 2 3 a.m whatever i'll be out there it's just in my brain and if somebody's like i'm gonna head home i'll be like work i'll go too it's just what i value i don't know okay there's a two and then three very much i don't know if this goes no outgoing is its own thing but it's kind of what i was talking about is i'm very much like a team player um and it's funny because leos are always said to be or some people have told me you know they're like the leader or they're very you know bold and confident and you know but for me I've always I mean I was a middle child all my life and then I got two new stepbrothers but I'm still somewhat in the middle and any conflict any sort of anything I mean I will get I would get in fights and I would be an instigator I'm not gonna say I never was but I was put in the middle position a lot in my life so I'm definitely kind of a people pleaser. I try to be, for sure. Um, and it's interesting because I watch Claudia Saluski. I don't know if any of you guys do too. And she talked about how she went to her first therapy session ever and she came out kind of realizing about herself that what she has told herself for years and years was a positive mindset and a go with the flow attitude was actually her just kind of not necessarily being taken advantage of but just saying yes to things that she would honestly rather say no to but just to be kind of a positive person or go with the flow person she would say yes and i i do see that in myself for sure a big collaborator a big team player i've always loved group projects but i've never been that one to like i only take over and i'm only the group leader if nobody else will do it if nobody else wants to do it i'll do it but i'm not going to be that assertive person be like i need to do it because i don't need to do it but i will if i have to and i won't mind <laughs> so that's a, i guess a little bit about me wow i've been talking for a while sorry future me that you have to edit all of this that wraps up the q a portion of this video um I will see you next in the car with Trish and mom. And we're gonna answer some fun true and false questions. I love you all very much. Thank you to everybody that has submitted questions to me and asked me things. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question, but I hope you guys learned a bit more about me. Okay, buh boy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 8.27 in the morning. We are heading to Long Island right now. H-O-V lane. In the H-O-V lane. lane. As I said, we're gonna do a little true or false car ride segment so okay the first one is your second fave 1d member was harry styles or like is because i already told them my i was a louis girl yeah true or false is your second favorite oh second for favorite. sure true. 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 true yeah that is correct yes. that is correct well, this is like a game show yes. i <laughs> see there was a point where you wanted to leave new york what there was a point where I wanted to leave New York City. Oh, that's the question. True, yeah, false. True, false. I would say false. Like false. Yeah, I would I say false. I would say false. I mean, if they're referring to like wanting like a little, little break, break yeah. little weekend, death. But like it's leaving is in like, moving like somewhere being, else yeah. or not being there. No, <laughs> you are an introvert. No. <laughs> I say no. I say no. Yeah. You, you know, introvert, extrovert. Yeah, I would I say you're like, not. I feel like you're more extrovert than introvert. Yes. Okay. Yes. I agree. Okay. I agree with that. You don't like coffee. 
don't like coffee. That yeah. is false. Yeah. Also, mind you, you'll get a coffee, you'll get a coffee with a straw and everything. Take yes. a sip and then let it sit there. Yes. Okay. Thank you, and Trisha. Don't touch it. Yes. <laughs> now that's you true. Sip, yes. And that's it. That is true. So you should, I've yeah. definitely become a more matcha, definitely. matcha drinker these days. Do you regret not going to a purely fashion school, or like, oh, yeah. let's just like, I'll phrase it as like, you you regret it. This is like that's a deep a, one. Ooh, that's, that's a really deep. It's not deep. I would say my guess would be overall false, but there might be times I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Cause like my thing, I I talked about this in the Q and I where it was like. If I were to change anything, then that would impact where I am right now, and I'm like happy with where I'm at. Right. Yeah. But like, there are things and skills that I wish I learned in college that I maybe expected I would at Fordham that I didn't. Yes. You know, yeah. things like that. Yeah. That like, like you may have gotten at, yeah. like that. I, yeah. I, I yeah. Yeah. would be guaranteed I that there. False, just because like you know like everything happens as you know. Yeah. Every, I mean, should, we're so meant to be where know, we are right free. now. Yes. yes. Exactly. And you're, it's never too late to learn. You can always exactly. go back and yeah. do, you know, to take a class or two for the things yeah. that you feel you missed. Right. You know, that's No, that's the that's thing. Like, school doesn't have to end after right. college. You oh can my always gosh, take yeah. classes. Yeah. This isn't a true or false, but how do you wear heels in NYC <laughs> for long oh. periods of time? Good we question. can all answer this. Or um, struggle oh. to answer this. Key for me would be and to just it? walk in your comfortable shoes, walk sneakers, a mile in these and then on. you carry your heels or put them in your bag and you put them on yeah. as needed. PRN heels. Like think about your day, like and how much you're going to be walking realistically. Yeah. And then gauge it if it's worth it or if it's not worth it. And also invest in like comfier heels. Like I feel like I have heels that I can trust. Yep. And heels that I cannot trust. But if you have a pair that you absolutely love and they make the outfit, are you willing yeah. to suffer the pain? Yes. For the outfit. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yep. You'll name your daughter Diana after oh, just, just talking about that. <laughs> Literally, yeah. You hate social media, but you need it for your craft. <laughs> mm, true or false? I don't know that you hate it. I don't think you hate it. Yeah. I think you feel the burden, like a yeah. responsibility, like a, like yeah, a, it's sometimes. Yeah, like, and, and it's also like, I don't know, it's weird, you know, always having to compare yourself to other people. That yeah. Yeah. That's, like, I think that's the, like, that's the psychologist that's the in the right car. Right. That's yeah. not good for any of you True. out there, people. Yeah. True. You be you. I definitely don't hate social media, because I think it can be good. Like, I've definitely, oh, sure. like, met a ton of people through it and, like, get a ton of inspo and stuff. It can be positive, but, like... It can also be just as much, if not more, negative. So it's like love-hate relationship with social media. You also have to like keep reminding yourself that like people are posting only the good things. Only yeah, the good things. Course. Yeah, that's true. It is a highlight reel. Like, I, I encourage people to show all of themselves. Not as in literally like naked. I meant like <laughs> that's just more real and that's... Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I still don't think there's anything wrong with just posting the good stuff no. either. Because it is your plot, yeah. like right. But you, know. you have to but then you hope people flex. A lot of yes. people flex, and yeah, and it's yeah, it can get you can get it twisted, and yes. and it's not fun. True or false? Your favorite animal is a cheetah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. The opportunity to share my favorite animal has not occurred in a while. Really? So like the just opportunity to Someone reflect at a job interview. Oh wow, really? so I'm gonna have to have that on deck. Yeah, yeah actually, it is a bear. To be honest, like, it is a bear. That is on a psych test that we do. If you could be any animal, what would you be and why? That's actually one of the questions yeah. I, that I give kids. Because it does reflect some aspect of you, you yeah. know, about, like what you choose and the reason you choose it. Ideally something that could go in the water and, and like Ooh. breathe underwater, but then also come out. <laughs> but yeah, like, I'm like a turtle. Yeah, that's a good one. Just yeah, to like experience a sea turtle in Hawaii. Oh, hundred oh, percent. Yeah. Sea turtle in Hawaii specifically, because oh, did you know they're not allowed yes. to touch sea it's turtles? Like, I it's did against not. the law. Oh, like they're very protected. Choice. So birds so I could fly. That would be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I probably want to be a dog so I could sleep all day. That sounds pretty nice. And have someone to feed me. Sea turtle, or I'd be like a panda. Pandas oh, are yes. hella cute. You just eat. You're just munching you're on bamboo like, oh, and shit. You're so That's cute. Funny. And you're just cute. And you're just cute. Yeah. Always you're cute. Just you're just cute. cute. All the time. You get nervous dressing eccentrically out. 
false in New York, but true in Native at home. Yeah, that I, yeah. Less so now. I kind Less of agree so with that. Less so now, but I yeah, I kind of agree with that. That shouldn't be. But I understand. And that it shouldn't be. I'm kind of like that too. I have different clothing I would wear when yeah. I'm in the city than when I'm going to work in Boston. Yeah. Know, or or even just going out, like in a round. But yeah, that shouldn't be. You should wear what you want to wear wherever you are. At all times. Because of quarantine and stuff, like the past year when I was home, I wasn't really like dressing, dressing. True. So like I, I don't really know like oh, yeah, from current experience Yeah, how I dress like when I'm home and how I feel I guess but yeah, it never in New York I, Do I feel like weird about it? The only time like feel like uncomfortable is like I don't know like wearing like shorter stuff and like not wanting to get like cat called or attention. uncomfortable that's, so that's like the only time when I like question what I'm wearing because I'm like do I want to get harassed today because it's going to happen. Someone asked, you are straight, but then put a put a red heart next to it. <laughs> it's just cute. You're straight? Is this from Kieran? I am straight. No. <laughs> that is no. true. You put balsamic on anything and everything. Yes, I do. <laughs> Someone said you're rich. Oh, no. no. <laughs> well, no, but Mom be relative. like, no. <laughs> very, very relative. You're right. Yeah. I am fortunate is all I would say, but blessed. I would not call myself rich. Yeah, blessed for sure. What, what defines rich? Is it... Being able to buy or do anything you want without worrying about it, like to me, that's kind of the definition of. Rich. That's kind of the definition of to rich me, in my brain but, too. Like, but then, but rich, we're just thinking money rich, like we love rich. It's like you know, Mom, there's so many different yeah, rich. I think that's it, y'all. That was fun. We're heading into the weekend of Mother's Day, so we are. Everyone, just think about your mother, and let's really think about Mother Earth. That's what, wow. I, that's what I want everyone to be. That part inspired right there. Yeah. Inspired for. Yep. Think about our mothers. Yep. And think about Mother Earth. Yes. That's a bar. That's a bar. And be a good mother to yourself. If you have a shitty mother, you, you know, <laughs> that happens. Right. Take care of yourself. Yep. Deep thoughts. And take care of your mom. That's yes. right. And take care of exactly. your mom. Exactly. Home Period. Make it. Yeah, how much where the heart is, everybody. Okay, I'm gonna leave us with that because that was an amazing ending. Love, Love you guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Okay, bye. bye.